Shamsi, I've got a question for you. Don't don't run, Shamsi. Shamsi, don't run. Shamsi, don't run. Got a question for you, Shamsi. Shamsi's afraid. As always, Shamsi's, Shamsi's running. Just a quick question, Shams. It's an easy question. Let's ask one of these guys. So the question is, would you agree that the Quran condemns Christians' belief in the Trinity? Yeah. Right. Wait, wait, give me an example of where that condemnation occurs. Surah class, we believe Allah is one. Sorry? Surah class, we believe Allah is one, the eternal. Yeah, so like Surah... Surah class, that is that, is that Surah 573? Yeah, very short Surah. Yeah. There it is, I've got my phone Okay, what does it say? Allah the one, so yeah. instant rejection of any belief in uh, any old, um, separate gods. Okay, right, hold on one second, let's, let's do this systematically. So you've said that the Quran condemns uh, yeah, yeah, one second. The, the Quran condemns. We'll just have to focus on one another. The Quran condemns a belief in three gods. Can you show me from my Bible where I believe in you three gods? You know how much is you live? Because I understand. No, you know how much money people Please calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't It's the alcohol. It's the alcohol. Yeah, I can smell it on him as well. He's had, he's had too much to drink. So, uh, so the Quran. Shall we move somewhere a bit quieter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's go this way, bro. Come on. Let's go for chance. Oh no, 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 very quickly, yeah, very quickly. Very quick, I'm just, yeah. I'm just moving away partly yeah, for yeah, that guy. So the guy. So my point is, yeah. the Quran. The Quran is. You, you've showed me a verse that condemns belief in more than one God. Yeah. But you can't show me any verse in the Bible where Christians are called to believe in three gods. My brother. Shake my hand because I know in the Bible that verse doesn't exist. Exactly. So we Christians don't believe in three gods. Know. Right, brilliant. Yeah. So my question was where does the Quran condemn the belief in the Trinity? So it's not that verse because that verse was condemning polytheism and we're not polytheists. We're in reference to strictly Trinity. Yeah, so show me a verse in the Quran that condemns the Trinity. So wait. I'm not too sure if I can show you a verse in the Quran or condemn the Trinity because uh, a verse in the Bible doesn't exist right. that advocates for the Trinity. Okay. So, so the reason why there are, the, the, the reason why Christians believe in the Trinity is because it is found in every part of Scripture, from Old to New Testament. Yeah. It's it's kind of like a picture metaphor painted with words. Yeah. And what we do is we take all those words together and then we see the Trinity in them. Like you have concepts in Islam yeah. that aren't found yeah, in one particular they're verse. Together. They're pieced together. So, for example, Salah, praying five times a day. There's no direct reference exactly. to how to form the Salah. Or exactly. We use the Quran, the Quran and, and the Hadith. Right. And the so we understand one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't need to have one verse. Yeah. Right. So my question is, yeah. what do you know? Do you just? I'm asking you. Do yeah. you personally know what the Trinity is that Christians believe in? As far as I'm aware, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Trinity to believe in the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son. Yes. And three into one. Yes. Now, sure. you, you would agree that the Quran condemns the, 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 the Trinity. So, if it's going to condemn the Trinity. Something's come to my head. The Quran does specifically condemn yes, the belief of um, God taking a son. Yes, show me that. Or I can tell you where it is if you prefer. Yeah, I haven't got off the top of my head. That's fine. Don't worry. So in Surah 6101, shall we pull it up and look at it? Was that the one you were thinking of? That wasn't, but it's a very similar. Okay, we can, we, can, we can go to that one as well. well. We'll go to both. We'll go to both. Let's look at both. Because my, my point... What's your name, bro? Ahmed. Ahmed. Nice to meet you, Ahmed. Bob. Bob. Nice to meet you. I've got a little bit of a cold, so uh, face bump. Yeah. Yeah. So, Surah 6, Ayah 101, it says, To him is due the primal origin of the heavens and the earth. How can he have a son when he hath no consort? What's a consort? A partner, a wife. Can you show me anywhere in the Bible where we say God has a wife? Off the top of my head, I presume that this is that verse. I've never heard of a concept existing in Christianity. Yeah, it doesn't. So it, so it doesn't, the so it doesn't Arabs. exist. The Arabs. Yeah, the Arabs. it doesn't this exist. This verse is talking about the Arabs. So, so this is not about the Trinity then? No, as a brother just confirmed. That's fine. Yeah. Right, so do we have a verse that's about the Trinity? Oh, people of Scripture. Do not commit yep. excess in your religion. Uh, passage, so please, is, passage. Um, An Nisa, Jude 6, 105. What, 6? 105. What, bear with me one second while I get there. So, thank you very much for a, a very courtous discussion. Surah so 6105, 
Sir, are you sure it's 0605? Yeah, and it's 0106. Yeah, 10. I suppose what, sorry. That's not 06. You're thinking of. 171, sorry. Yeah. I think you're talking about 05, aren't you? 4171. Yeah, sorry, sir. Four, four, sorry, chapter 4, verse 171. 4171. So 4171. Let's confirm we've got like a very similar. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. In cross reference. That's absolutely fair and that's totally fine. So 4171. Yeah. Okay. So 4171. Oh, people of the book, so that is talking about Jews and Christians. Yeah. So we've identified yeah. that it is talking yeah. about Jews and Christians. Commit no excess in your religion, nor say of Allah aught but the truth. The Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word, which he bestowed on Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him to believe. Guys, 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 focus. Yeah, right? So, which he bestowed on Mary and a spirit proceeding from him. So believe in Allah and his messenger, say not Trinity desist. Now, the word Trinity there is not appearing in the Arabic. That, that, the, the, it's the word three, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, that's, that. Yeah. So a more accurate translation, a more accurate translation would be to say not three. Shall we move away from these guys while they debate? Yeah, let's move away. Okay. So, say, yeah, I'm trying to have a players in conversation. So, say not three. This is say not three. But three what? Three what? I mean... Three entities would be the most common sense. Three entities. Um, would be the most common sense uh, conclusion to derive from that. But the contrast is against the genus of Allah, is it not? It's saying say not three, but yeah. it's comparing that three to the genus of Allah himself. Say not three for Allah is one what? I wouldn't make that claim because I'm not well versed in the Quran enough okay. to purport to derive that type of uh, yeah. from it. That, so that would you that's that's totally yeah. fair. Would you say that Allah's attributes are eternal like Allah? Yeah. Would you say that Allah's words are one of his attributes? Yeah, so. Would you say Allah's word spirit is his word is eternal? Right. So this is a word from Allah. Yeah. So it's saying that Jesus, yeah. look at this, it says that Jesus yeah is the messenger of Allah and his word. Yeah. Now, is the word of Allah eternal? His word yeah. is um, in reference to him being his messenger on earth at the time. Right, yeah. right. But his word here, I suspect, is actually the word be. Okay. The, the creative word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, if Jesus is Allah's word, then this verse alone, yeah. without the use of other verses, you could conclude that Jesus is eternal because Jesus is Allah's word and Allah's word is eternal. It's a fair conclusion. It was a, it's a common sensical conclusion. Yeah. If the other premises are correct. Exactly. Yeah. But we would we would have to look at other yeah. passages, and wouldn't as Muslims, we? That's also so funny because what you just said, funny enough, falls directly in line to what Muslims believe about Jesus. Yeah. We don't believe Jesus was killed. Exactly. We believe Jesus was created. Yeah. Set to earth. Yep. Spread a message. And yep. The original Christians were very small in number. Yep. And um, what <clears> happened was after he'd done spreading his message and had his small followers. It was the uh, rabbis. Can we focus on the Trinity? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Let, yeah. Let's stick to the Trinity. Yeah, sure. Well, we believe he's eternal, basically. Yeah. And so, he's, well, not eternal, sorry, but he didn't die at that time. He was taken to heaven, and there was two narrations. So one say it was Judas that was put on the cross, and yeah. one say it was a companion of Jesus who offered himself voluntarily to say, yeah, kill me instead. So, we Jesus was taken to paradise, yeah. and Jesus will return again, the second coming, we believe, like you guys. Yeah, but we're, we're talking coming. about the Trinity. So let's. I'm not you said that Jesus is eternal. That was the point, right? Yeah. Do you believe Jesus is eternal? Jesus no, is eternal. I, I believe as a Christian, Jesus is eternal. Okay. I'm saying that that passage on yeah. its own yeah. could imply that, okay. but I accept that that's yeah, not yeah. what Muslims believe. Yeah, My point to you is, would you agree we should allow the Quran to interpret the Quran? So, if I misinterpreted that surah that seems to imply that Jesus yeah. is eternal, yeah. we should allow other surahs of the Quran to correct my misinterpretation. What I believe is, as a Muslim, I'm a layman, so I'm just the yeah. average Joe. Well, right, that's fine. Yeah. So what I believe is, is that the interpretation of the book should be left to the people. There's obviously foundational verses in the Quran, yep. which are really easy and commonsensical. So God is one, he's the other ones I just showed you. And there's no disagreement with them. Then there's other principles in Islam in the Quran, which are a bit more harder to grasp and tougher to grasp. And we leave those concepts to the people who studied the book inwardly and outwardly for 40, 50, 60 years. Right, but and do you- And they would derive, we would, we would stick with that. So do you agree yeah. that we should allow the Quran to interpret itself so that people don't misinterpret? I believe we should let the people are learned in the Quran. Right, interpret it. yeah. so the Quran, the Quran says don't believe in three. Yeah. 
I would suggest to you that the Quran identifies who that three is. It identifies as the three that should not be worshipped as Trinity is this. O children of Israel, so we know who's been spoken to. It was the Jewish followers of Jesus. Worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Whoever joins other gods with Allah, Allah will forbid him the garden and the fire will be his abode. There will be for the wrongdoers be no one to help. They do blaspheme who say Allah is one of three in a trinity. For there is no God except one. And it tells them to desist. So it's identifying that there are three, three entities that should not be worshipped. And it's talking within the context of Jesus' life. But then it identifies who they are. They are in 5116. Do you want to pull up 5116? Who's identified as the three in the Jewish context that the Quran is speaking into? And beware when Allah will say, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, Take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, Exalted are you. It was not for me to say that to which I have no right. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is within myself, and I do not know what is within, my, within yourself. Indeed, it is you who is the knower of the unseen. Right. So you're gonna, your argument is basically that the Trinity that is referred to the Quran is Jesus, Mary, and Allah. Allah. Right. Now, that's obviously not the Trinity, is it? It's not the Christian Trinity. Yeah, it's not the Christian Trinity. Can you show me any passage in the Quran? The Holy Ghost, the Father, and the Son. Can you show me any passage in the Quran where the worship, the explicit worship of the Holy Ghost, is condemned like the explicit worship of Jesus and Mary are condemned? Um, like I said, bro, there's no, there may not be an explicit condemnation of the actual specific entity. Talking my, about my point was um, my, my original point was the same way some Muslims take that um, reverence to another level yeah. unconsciously because they'll openly tell you I'm, I'm not worshiping Muhammad. Yeah. The same way some Christians will tell me. I get your argument. Yeah, I'm not worshiping. But Mary. the point is, the point is, we judge Christianity based upon what the you know the, the apostles teach. Yeah. We don't look at bad examples of Christians course, and go, course, that's what Christianity yeah, teaches. That's childish. In the same way that I couldn't make a good argument against Islam by just pointing to all the bad Muslims. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But what I am making an argument is that the Quran has an error inside of it. An error that should not be there if it's from God. The error, correct me if I'm wrong, the error you're purporting is that the Quran has made reference to Muslim, uh, sorry, Christians worshipping, sorry, yeah, Christians worshipping Jesus and Mary as part, and God as part of the Trinity. So, that's so part... Is that, is that your error? The, the error that's in the Quran, yeah. in summary form, yeah. When you look at all what the Quran says about what Christians believe, yeah. it gets it wrong again and again and again. Okay. So it thinks that we believe in three gods. That's error number one. Yeah. It thinks that one of those three gods is Mary. That's error number two. Yeah. That one of those gods, plural, is Jesus. That's error number three. That God only had a son called Jesus because he had a wife called Mary, a consort. That's error number four. Wait, wait one second. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. Error number five. Yeah. It says that Allah becomes Jesus. That's not what Christians believe. We don't believe that Allah becomes Jesus. So error number six. Yeah. It says that um, that that. Um, in fact, we'll just stop there because I'm not sure what error yeah, number six enough. is. But five errors, see, right there. Five, what errors? I don't like any. No, I'm all right. Yeah, These errors, I don't feel Actually, like, yes, please. They don't really strike me as erroneous, to right. be honest. Because the first error was um, Jesus, Mary, and God being the Trinity, the Muslim reported Trinity. Yeah. But I mean, why is that far fetched if some people at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu yeah. in Saudi Arabia would have held Mary in reverence? And unless you were to literally go and debunk them the same way me, you have really like. Yep. Like, do you know what I mean? Really, what's the word? Scrutinized the topic. Yeah. Um, that probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And if it didn't have happened, I mean. Right. So, but, but the point is, think yeah. about what your defense was there. Yeah. Your defense was essentially a defense of human ignorance. Yeah. Because you were essentially saying, well, if no one corrected them, how would they know? Right. But that means that what you've done is you've reduced the author's knowledge of the Quran to the level of a human being. The Quran, if you believe it 
in the way that Muslims claim, yeah. is literally God speaking from his perspective, yeah. his words to Muhammad about what Christians believe. Okay. And he gets it totally wrong. Yeah. Now, if that was a man, that would be excusable. But, this, saying, yeah. but that means that we're then left with the choice of saying that perhaps yeah. the Quran is I'm from a man. Yeah, I'm speculating. That's fine, yeah. that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking you know. of different yeah. responses as to what... Because these errors, they're only striking as erroneous. All right, well, let, let's, yeah. what, what, let's, let's just define our terms. Yeah, sure. What is an error? How would, you, how, how would you define an error? Why I would say the Quran is perfect in its form is because everything is predicted has come true. And no, 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 that's not my question. Yeah. No, no, what no, is no, an no. error? No, we, we get to error, but an error is a mistake. A mistake? In, in essence. Get, my, did, point did, was, my point was, what, what, before we get to mistake, no. my point was to prove to you the validity of the No, 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 no because... The validity of the scripture, no, as opposed to I, the error. Uh, Because what I'm talking about is, yeah. I'm, I'm accusing the Quran of having an error inside it. Yeah. You're saying, I gave you five examples, yeah. You're saying you don't see any of them as errors, so now we've got to define what an error is. Now you yeah. said an error is a mistake, no offence, but that's just defining one word with another word. Yeah, fair enough. Give me an example of what an error is or a mistake or, uh, is in terms of speech. In terms of speech, you say something you didn't mean or you say something that uh, you implied something else. Well, untrue? Untrue. Yeah. Factually false. False, yeah. So if I said that you are a six foot black man, would you agree that is an error? I'll tell you right now, that is the way the world is headed right now. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah. But would we agree that is yeah, an error? Yeah, right. Quite clearly. So in other words, if you make a, a factual statement about something that turns out to be not true, that's fair to call that an error. It's a fair point. Right. Yeah, fair so point. now let's go again through what the Quran states Christians yeah. believe, yeah. and then what actually Christians yeah. believe. You know, when he talks, so I the like first statement... Error. Focus, focus on me, bro. No, listen, listen, right? listen, listen, so the Quran is stating error, error, error. that we believe in three gods. Yeah. Right. But there is no evidence to show that Christians believe in three gods. Can you show me a statement from a pope, a church father, or a patriarch that we believe in three gods? A statement from the Bible that says we believe in three gods? A statement from an accepted biblical Christian commentator on the Bible that says we believe in three gods? Any statement at all to demonstrate we believe in three gods, I'm giving you 2,000 years to do it in. Any form of accepted Christian literature, can you show me? No. Right. And, and I'll tell you the reason why. Yeah. Because we don't. Yeah. Now that means that we've established that the Quran has stated a factual error. But I'm not, like I said, I'm not very well versed in Christian history. Yeah. So if you were to ask me that question, or if you ask that question to somebody who's more well versed, in Christian history, we might be able to give you a more satisfactory response. I, I'm actually writing a book on Christian history. Oh, dang it. Yeah. Right? So I, I can tell you, yeah. and, and the reason why I can tell you this, if someone said, I'm a Muslim, but Muhammad was not a prophet. You're no longer Muslim. Bingo. Yeah. Right. If someone says, I'm a Christian, but I believe in three gods, they're no longer Christian. Okay. The definition of a Muslim is that you believe in Allah, his oneness, and that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. Yeah. Fair? Well, the definition of a Christian is you believe in one God. And that has always been the definition. We agree with you. Right, yeah. but the Quran doesn't. The Quran says Christians believe in three gods. So is that an error? The Christians of the, the Christian, no, it's, it's about the Christians. One, one second. The Christians, the original Christians believed in one God. Like I told you, the Christians of Jesus, yeah. his disciples, his followers. Right. When the Quran is in reference to them, it's, it only speaks in reference. Can you show me, now you've made a statement here, yeah. and, and I want to say to you with, with all the love and respect in my heart, yeah. you're grasping, you're making something up, because you're going to try to suggest that there were some original Christians who believed in one God, and then some later Christians, and then some later Christians who believed in three gods, but where's your evidence? Well, my evidence would be that Go on. The, the Quran tells us the rabbis yeah. took control of the Christian scriptures, and basically, deducted and added verses to the scripture yeah. to confuse the people. Yeah. And that's what they've done. But, that, so, but that's, no offence, but that's yeah. circular arguments. You're saying, I'm saying, yeah. the Quran says X, X is wrong. You're saying, the Quran says X, X is true. So what we've got to do... It's because the base I'm operating at and the base you're operating at, yeah. we look at the Quran in two different lights. Right, but, so, but, but the point is, I can, I can verify for you with evidence yeah. 
For 2,000 years, Christians have believed in one God. For 2,000 years? Yes. If you look at the writings of the church fathers, yeah. they're explicit in black and white, Christians believe in one God. If you look at one of the earliest statements of the Christian faith, the Nicene Creed, yeah. it says, we believe in one God. You look at one of the earliest church writers, Origin, he says we believe in one God. Because you are, you're familiar with the fact that as Muslims you believe all these books, all these religions came from Allah anyway. Right, that's fine, but so my point is... Religion to teach monotheism. Yeah. So they all believe in one God. Right. And if you are to read the scriptures, yeah. you'll still find evidences to suggest they believe in one God in the Torah, even yes. in the scriptures. But we're not talking about those. Yeah. We're talking about the fact that the Quran says, yeah. I believe in three gods. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. We're not talking well, about... That's the error. Yes, and I can demonstrate the error because for 2,000 years I can demonstrate generation after generation of Christian every single year for 2,000 years believing in one God. Right, but that means the Quran gets it wrong. Because we both agree that the definition of an error is to state a factually false thing like me saying you're a six foot black man. That's a factually false thing to say, and that's what the Quran is doing. Uh, I think, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not sold. The reason I'm not sold is because... So show me not, the it's flaw not, in my it's logic. Not, it's, not a, it's not a compelling enough argument to disprove the Quran. Show me, show me, it's not compelling enough. show me the... F well, how many errors need to be in the Quran for the Quran to be false according to the well, Quran? I mean, according to the error that we've just, this, this, this error we've just yeah. discovered. Yeah. I mean... You're saying that the Quran is suggesting that Christians believe Jesus, Mary and God yeah. are the Trinity. Yeah. But you're telling me that according to Christian history, the Trinity is... Spirit, Father, Father, Son and Father, Holy Son. Spirit, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I don't understand, why would that be an error? Right. You're saying, it's, you're saying it's factually incorrect. Right. So, so, I'm saying... Yeah, go on. What's the significance? Right, now, so... So, okay. So, according to the Quran, yeah. does the Quran not state if this were from any other than Allah, they, yeah. as in people like me, yeah. would find errors or contradictions within it. Yeah. Is that what the Quran states? The Quran does, right. It does it do, for something to have an error in it, yeah. does it matter whether it has one error or a thousand errors? True. So if I can identify just one error yeah. in the Quran, then according... What you're saying, no, what you're one, saying, one, one second. Makes perfect right, sense. brilliant. Yeah. Now, now let me move the argument forward, which is that the Quran has stated the equivalent of what's your name again sorry Ahmed, Ahmed. Yeah. Ahmed. Ahmed is a six foot black man yeah. that's an error if there was a if I wrote a book to de about today's events and I said I spoke to a six foot black man called Ahmed yeah. right you took I'd be lying I'd be wrong yeah. well the Quran has said that Christians believe in three gods that's just wrong Christians have never believed in three gods by definition, you can't be a Christian and believe in three gods. Like, by definition, yeah. you can't be a Muslim and say Muhammad is not a prophet. Yeah. You know? So, if the Quran is stating something that's false, yeah. which we've identified that it is, then according to the Quran, it's not from God. As a Christian, do you feel like what you're telling me, are you, are you isolated in your belief? Or are you, is this a mainstream Christian belief? Okay, Because right. I've had conversations with lots of different Christians over the years. Yeah. But this is the first time I'm hearing that an outright rebuttal of the Trinity. I haven't rebutted yeah. the Trinity. As is understood. As understood. I, I haven't rebutted the Trinity at no point. Okay. I believe in the Trinity. Okay. My, what I'm, what, what I am, yes, I believe in, yes, one God, because Trinity is a belief in one God. Let me be clear about what the Trinity as Muslims, is. As Muslims, we can't comprehend how a Trinity and yes. a belief in one God can coincide. Because the Quran gets it wrong. The moment you stop thinking about the topic through the prism of the Quran, it makes sense. But the problem with Muslims is that they think about the Trinity based on what the Quran says about the Trinity, and that's why you can't understand it. The moment you sidestep the Quran, the Trinity can make sense. So let me just explain what we Christians believe about the Trinity, okay? The first thing, and if you don't remember anything else about what I'm about to say, remember this bit. The Trinity is oneness. The Trinity is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one in their essence. They are one in their nature. They are one in the thing that makes them God. So, what I mean by that, to use a very crude and very flawed analogy, it's as if to say that you have three persons that share 
identically and at the same time all of the same atoms. So there aren't three sets of atoms. There's one set of atoms that all three persons have completely and uniquely. Right? Now, lots of Muslims, they get caught up on this idea of how can one be three and three be one? Right? But bro, you already accept that three is one and one be three all the time. Right now, you're stood in three-dimensional space. You've got one axis, you've got a second axis, and then you've got a, 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 a third axis. X, Y, and Z axes. They've all got the same attributes. They are all the same, you know, because you can tilt and switch the axes around, but you still end up with three no matter how you rotate it. The X just becomes Y, the Y just becomes Z. But you experience them and know them as one thing. So you accept that one can be three and three can be one. That's not a problem for you. So you see, the Trinity begins to make sense when you stop trying to think about it through what the Quran says. Yeah. Right? Well, okay, that makes sense. Well, okay, thank say you. Is, the next point I would say is... Yeah. Uh, um, the sacrifice. Yeah. I was there last Sunday, I had this conversation. Yeah. Um, you stopped me, it's all. You were in a rush. Yeah. Um, one of your mates. Um, but it was to do the sacrifice. And as a Muslim, we can't get our heads around the fact that all loving, all merciful, all powerful God yeah. would need to or want to sacrifice his most beloved creation to him. Right. So, to, in order to forgive. So, firstly, Christians don't believe. Yeah. Christians don't believe that the Son of the Father, the Son of God, the Divine Logos, yeah. is a created being. Okay. Okay. So the, the 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 person of Jesus Christ, the divinity that is Jesus Christ, ha, is eternal. It isn't created. But that that divinity takes to itself a humanity, right? Yeah. And that humanity is not confused with the divinity. It doesn't change the divinity, yeah. and it isn't mingled with the divinity. Okay. So when we talk about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. We're talking about Jesus Christ dying on the cross because of his humanity. It isn't that God dies. It isn't that no, no, God... No, I'm not right. disputing that. Yeah. I'm not disputing that. But it's just because remember, we're talking about the Trinity. Yeah, but for me, it's just a fact. For Muslims in general, it's just a fact that we believe God is omnipotent. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants, however he wants. Yeah. He, if he wanted to forgive me and you, and all the other billions and trillions of people who have ever existed, yeah. he could do so like that. So he wouldn't need to sacrifice, yeah. or Jesus would need to be nailed to a cross in order for him to forgive anything, because there's no conditions for God's mercy. So why then in the hadiths yeah. do you have a story that on the day of judgment, when people are crossing over the bridge, yeah. that some people won't be able to get over the bridge because of their good deeds, but Allah will take the sins of those Muslims and put them onto the Jews and Christians and chuck the Jews and Christians into hell with the sins of the Muslims. I know it doesn't, but that's what your hadith say. Can you, can you show it to us? Can you, yeah, let's have a look. I'm not disputing it doesn't exist, by the way. It might very well exist. Yeah. I just haven't come across it. Yeah, I will try to find it for you now. I've never come right? across it. But it does exist. But, but let's suppose it does exist. Let's suppose it does. Yeah. Thank you. Let's suppose it does. Yeah. yeah. What, would say. what a Muslim would say is that ultimately, after, Christian, after Islam, no religions were to be accepted afterwards. Right. So the Christians of Jesus will be promised paradise. Yeah. The Jews of Moses promised paradise. Yeah. The, uh, and so and so. And after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no, there's you no know, other religions accepted after this. So the, Muslim, the Jews and the Christians, are, Muhammad is a prophet for them also. That's what we believe. Because he's only a continuation of that line of prophets. Yeah. That lineage of prophets. So, so, so my, my, my yeah, point we, to you. We believe that. Yeah. Sorry. The Muslims, the, the sins, the, the worst we believe, this might sound harsh, but I'm not going to cut any corners with you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst Muslim is better than the best non Muslim. I know that's what Muslims yeah, believe. The reason being, it's not true, but I know. No, the reason being, no, I had a reason, the, 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 the um, logical reason behind it, yeah? We, we believe people have rights. You have your rights, the lady over has her rights, the brother has his rights, the gentleman has his rights. And we can do our best to fulfill everybody's rights. So I'll look after you, I'll look after this brother, I'll look after her, I'll look after her. We do our best. But we also believe God has his own rights upon us. You have your rights over me, I have my rights over you. Your right over me. Right, I've got it, I've got it, I've got the hadith. Right? Listen. Guys, listen, 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 right? 
Let me just uh, let me just give it to you. Bear with me one second. Um, <clears throat> bear with us. So this is Hadith Qudsi. Um, right. In a book entitled One. Yes, yes. Are you, are you listening? Sorry, bro. Listen, listen. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. So, in Hadith, in the book entitled 110 Hadith Qudsi, yeah. translated by Said Masood Ul Hassan. Okay? Yeah. So, I've given you a reference. Yeah, yeah. Right? The Hadith is Sahih. Sahih Muslim yeah. 2767. Narrated from Abu Musa. From the Prophet. 2767 Sahih Muslim from the Prophet who said on the day of resurrection some of the Muslims will come with sins like mountains yeah. but Allah, Allah will forgive them and will put them their sins onto the Jews and Christians so the point is if you're saying that you can't accept that God will take the sins of the world and put it on Jesus then you've now got a problem with your own hadiths. No, because, no let me finish. I, I listen to you. Yeah, yeah. Because your hadiths say that God will take the sins of the Jews and the Christians, sorry, the sins of the Muslims who have sins like mountains, he will take them and put them on the Jews and the Christians yeah. and cast them into hell. Yeah. It's the same concept. If you can believe that Allah can do on Judgment Day this thing where he takes the sins of the Muslims and puts them on the Jews and the Christians, then you can't have any complaint about the idea that God can take the sins of every human being and put them on Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, let I me explain why. Let me finish. I haven't finished. Yeah, right? Because there's some other points to this. Yeah. Firstly, Muslims believe that the law of Moses was revealed by Allah. That law talked about animal sacrifices in which the sins of the Jewish people would be put on the sacrifices. So, again, you've got it in Islam that Muslims believe that Allah will take the sins of the people and on this case put it on animals and those animals will be sacrificed okay so so let let are you Ahmed 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 are you finished uh, focusing focus Ahmed the Ahmed this guy is just he just interrupts conversations right the whole conversation will be disrupted if you pay him attention so in terms of so you've got this concept in Islam now let me explain to you as a Christian why I say that the life of Jesus is worth more than the entirety of creation, right? The, the life that died on the cross was the human life of Jesus. But that human life was united to the divine person. So the person of Jesus Christ dies in his human body. And because it is united to the divine person, its value, the value of that human body is more valuable than the entire universe together and all the angels and all the heavens. Exactly. So that's, that's, so, so, now explain to me. My counterpoint would be, is that what you've done is that you've just explained to me why Jesus is held in such high regard. Makes sense. Yeah. But your original point was, the Hadith, was that the sins will be put onto the Jews and the Christians. As point you got the same concept. Yeah. So it's a Sahih Muslim. I it's not the same concept. Is because how is it not? It's not the same concept because taking the sins from God's beloved to those who is not are, are his beloved yep. is different to taking the sins of those who are cursed to his beloved. Right, hold on one second. Yeah. Because here's where you've misunderstood Christianity again. Yeah. I am saying to you, right, I am saying to you, yeah. yeah, that right at this moment, Ahmed, you are an enemy of God, but you are also God's beloved. God loves you, even though you are estranged from him, even though you are his enemy, he has given you the free gift of salvation. The re you're, you're, you're right, that, but you're right in the sense of there's a difference between taking the sins and putting them on the enemies of God from the beloved of God. What I'm saying yeah. is that you are the beloved of God. The person of Jesus Christ is the beloved of the Father, and, he is, and Jesus Christ has taken your sins because he loves you. It's his love that means that he takes your sins onto his cross. It's his love. That, sal that gift of salvation, it's like a check in your back pocket. I've got a check, you've got a check, it cancels all of our debts. 
The difference between me and you is I've taken the cheque out of my back pocket and I've cashed it. You've still got it in your back pocket. All you need to do, bro, is cash the cheque. You do the same thing, man. Right. But hold on one second. Hold on one second. But the thing is, Muslims have the concept that the sins of bad people, because remember, those are bad Muslims. Sins never good. Agreed? Sins are never good, but... So those are sinners, right? We believe that heaven isn't full of pious people. Yeah. Heaven is full of sinners who repent. Amen. The atoning sacrifice of Christ, when Allah does the same thing in your hadiths. Well, I've shown you why it's not the same thing. But it is the same. Why? Right. It's not. Because taking from your beloved to your enemies, as opposed to from your enemies to your beloved, is not the same. No, no, no. What did I say you are to God? Oh, you said I'm his beloved. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm estranged up until the point I'm his beloved. Yeah. God loves you. He doesn't hate you because he's in him. And I would say that is the reason why our vision of God is better than the Islamic vision of God. Because the Islamic vision of God says that this eternal God hates those who don't worship him and follow his Islam, his deen, his haq. Why is that? Hold on one second. No, 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 let me finish. Let me finish my point. We're saying that God loves you even though you are his enemy. And that is a better vision of God. Which of those sounds, two visions? It's, 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 it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds great. Which one is more magnanimous? Which one is more merciful out of those two well, visions like of God? I feel like fair uh, representation of Allah you've done from the, from the Islamic perspective. I feel like you've just gone by the really vindictive image of the Old Testament God. Like, now it's going by the vindictive uh, image of the Quran. No, we, we're not because I mean God has the same image throughout Scripture. Throughout Scripture. We believe that as Muslims, mm. yeah. everybody's born, we all signed up for this journey of yeah. life. We don't believe, like some, some might say, why am I here? We believe... We were created as souls in a primordial realm, and in that realm, we said to Allah, sign us up. Yep. We want to live on earth for X amount okay. of years, yep. and we'll, so we'll submit to you, we'll worship you. Right. So we believe every human has a, a soul, and that soul has an innate disposition. Yeah. And that innate disposition is always towards Islam, yeah. or the belief in one God. Yeah. Um, so with that innate disposition that you've got, well, with Christianity, it's just it's, it's, it's opposite, I feel like. So you, you've shown to me why you feel like um, God is more beloved, uh, more, lo more loving and more nice in Christianity. But I feel like that image of God is the reason why Christianity has now gone. I, 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 I want to say, really yeah, lost, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, its yeah, go on. essence and its stronghold in the West. Yeah. And it's been hijacked by liberalism. I agree. The, the reason why Christianity has lost its stronghold in the West is because we've mistaken love for nice and they're not the same thing. The same Just thing. as you did. Yeah. You exactly. associated love and nice as being the same, the same thing. thing. They're not they're the not. same thing. Too far so that is not my vision of God. I don't believe in a nice God. Yeah. I believe in a loving God. Okay. And loving means just. that if, yes, just, if you choose to reject what God has called you to, yeah. he'll give you what you want. And that means we believe too. you'll be in hell. That's what we believe as well, right? man. We believe, as I was saying, you're, yeah. you wanted to be a Muslim. You, you were a Muslim originally. No, no, so no. You're, so that's what we believe. All yeah. humans. Yeah. All humans have ever been created were all yeah. Muslims. And it's their environment and their social factors, social economic factors, which may take them elsewhere. Let me, let me, let me advance the argument a little bit more. Because sure. I want to explain to you why I reject Islamic belief in God. Okay, go for it. Okay? The, the Islamic description of God yeah. is self-contradictory. When you take it and you look at what Muslims attack Christianity about. Let me give you an example. I mean, we, can't, we can't base the religion of Islam on what Muslims attack Christians on. That's not fair, I don't yeah. think. No, you'll see what I'm saying. You can always correct me if you yeah, think sure. I'm wrong. Sure. Muslims attack Christianity, the idea that God became man because you say God can't be limited. How can the infinite become finite? How can the divine attributes be restricted by... Human, human condition. Uh, the, the, the by, crea the by the created order, yeah, the by the created sense. world. Right. There's a hadith, in the, uh, the hadith, yeah. Sahih hadith, yeah. that says that the glory of Allah is veiled by light. That Allah has a veil. You know about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The veil is created, isn't it? Yeah. Right. The veil holds back the glory of Allah that would otherwise destroy the universe, doesn't it? Yeah. So you have the same concept as the incarnation that something created can restrain the divine attribute, can veil it, can restrict it. Because you believe that the veil of light stops the glory of Allah's face from burning up the whole of creation. We it's believe... similar to um, the uh, paradox, mm. the um, philosopher's paradox about um, if, if God is so powerful, can he create a rock so heavy he can't lift it? Yeah, can God create something so big so, that it can cover him? Yeah, that's, we're in that same boat right. right now. But as Muslims, so, we so, reject those type of um, parables. Right, so, so has Allah got a created veil? 
does that veil stop his glory from burning the universe? Right, so something created has restricted the uncreated glory of Allah. And we Christians believe that God becomes man in the flesh. And so because we, we, we look at Jesus Christ, we see God, but we don't see him in his full glory. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me use another analogy to lay it out for you. In your, you're quite an intelligent guy, so I know you can do this. In your mind's eye, imagine that you're in the vacuum of space and you're looking at a sun, a bubbling plasma, liquid, gaseous, yeah, burning away in all of its glory, in all of its bright light. You, you would agree you're seeing the sun, you're experiencing the sun. Now imagine that someone puts up a, a thick blanket in front of that and now you cannot see it in this thought experiment, right? Then someone comes along and just cuts a little incision in that veil and light starts to come through again. Would you agree that when you see the light, you're seeing the sun? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Would you also agree that even though you see the sun, you're not seeing the sun in all his glory? Well, that is exactly what we Christians believe about the incarnation. Fair enough. So we don't see God in all his glory, which is why you can see him and live, because you're seeing his humanity. And it's no different from the idea that you believe that a created veil you're only seeing that 1% of the light of the sun. Yeah, exactly. So, but it is genuinely the yeah, sun no, that you're yeah, seeing. Course, it's not some other light, yeah. it's actually the yeah. light of the sun. And, and the thing is, Muslims attack Christianity yeah. as they do on the Incarnation for things that if they think logically they would have to dismiss their own religion for. And I've just given you an example, the idea of the veil and light limiting the divine attribute of God's glory. How would you reply to that? It's a good point. It's an interesting point. But what I would say is, God's creation and the things he creates, so for example, we believe God has veils, but his veil is unlike a veil, I understand a veil. So for Agreed. example, God has a hand, the yeah. hand of God. It's nothing like a human hand. Yeah. It's just a metaphor. So yeah. But we're not talking about the uncreated hand of Allah. Yeah. We're talking about the created veil of Allah. Yeah. That thing was created. Yeah. But yet it stops the glory of Allah breaking through and burning the universe. Yeah. In the same way that we Christians believe that God has become a man and that flesh stops the glory of God coming through in all of its glory, which would consume the universe. No, these are fair points, but these come down to our definitions and our understanding of God. So, but the veil, the, yeah. I agree, the veil yeah. is not, the veil is not, yeah. the veil is not, like any other veil in creation. Yeah. But it is a created veil. And then it comes back to this logical non sequitur, which is to say, how can Allah create a veil that's so big that it stop, covers him? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's that, it's that parable. And it's why, as Muslims, yeah. we're, we're told not to even engage in these paradoxes that basically, because I've, I've done philosophy at uni. Oh, great. And yeah, this is pretty much what we're Favourite philosopher? Uh, Favourite philosopher, I've got to be Nietzsche, man. Ditto. Oh, yeah, yeah man, ditto. Awesome. It's, it's all about Nietzsche. Like, yeah, Nietzsche. Yeah. I'm a little bit young as well, man. Yeah. I'm really looking into young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love young. But yeah. I mean, when it comes to Islam, I feel like. I thought I was even saying, so remind me again. So we were talking about the fact that Muslims the don't engage in these paradoxes. paradoxes. Yeah, these paradoxes. Reason being is because these paradoxes are very cyclical. Yeah. So, like, there's no right or wrong answer. And like, like the original one I gave you can yeah. create a, a rock. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, what's the right answer? To well, I, I, I would say so that the question is flawed because the question has now placed um, its own interpretation of limitations on God. Right. So I would say to you, because remember, you said to me at the beginning that you came here for Shamsi, right? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no, you were listening to Shamsi or you heard Shamsi. No? Have I misunderstood? Maybe uh, I misheard. Shamsi. I was, I was too okay, I, I misheard you, sorry. I'm not, I'm not a big Shamsi fan. Person. Yeah, uh, Shamsi Gonzalez. He's, <laughs> he's kind of like in a cult of one and yeah. 12 people that follow him around the corner. You know? But, but the super <laughs> he's a good, Salafis. He's, he's a good brother. He's a good brother. The super man. Salafis. He's a good so, so my point to you is, my point to you is, yeah. is that as Christians, right, there is this right answer. Yeah. You know, God can become a man. He can take to himself a human nature. And that human nature does not change his divinity. Yeah. It is not to be confused with his divinity. And it isn't mingled with his divinity. Yeah. But God can act as a man. But see, for us, like, what you said makes perfect sense. It's flowed logically. But for us, that first point yeah. is where we can't proceed further than. 
where you say God is a, is a man, for us that's where it ends. And I'm saying but you've got no logical reason not to. Fair enough, if that's what you believe, no problem. But we believe Allah is one and that's that. Yeah. So we, be we also yeah. believe God is one. But in, in the sense of everything that follows, yeah. him being a man, etc, 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 yeah. human attributes, having to sleep, having to... Because in the Quran, that same surah, I showed surah class, it says slumber never affects him. So God is not affected by sleep. Or now let, let, let's just see if you truly understood what I said. Sure. Because if you understood what I said, you'll be able to answer this question. Yeah. Right? And don't worry, this is not a gotcha moment. Yeah. <laughs> not trying to catch you out or embarrass you. Just, just imagine it like an exam uh, at the end of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a, a lecture. Yeah. We, you're right. We believe that Jesus Christ needed to sleep, needed to eat, needed to go to the toilet. Yeah. When we say that, are we saying that the divinity needed to sleep, so needed the human to? Condition. Bingo. Yeah. The human nature. Yeah. So we're not saying that the divinity yeah, no, needed I, I, to sleep. Yeah, it's not that I haven't understood. Yeah. That. Good. I just wanted yeah, to make sure. Exactly. Yeah. It was the human nature. Yeah. It's, it's your yeah. thing that Jesus was not a victim, but he was. Um, he was had to play the position of his circumstances. He being a human being. He took upon his human. He, 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 yeah. he became he like us in every way. He had to match his environment. Yeah, the, 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 the scriptures say that he became like us yeah. in every condition yeah. apart from sin. Okay, fair enough. So that's what it is. With Muslims, we wouldn't believe that. Yeah. That's, that's what it comes right. down to. Ahmed, it was really lovely was talking pleasure, to you. Man. Really a pleasure. I'll see you soon, man. Have you got a Bible? I haven't got a Bible. Man. I would like to give you a gift right. then. You're a really pleasant, you're a really lovely bloke. Man. So I give everybody, I, I give everybody. Give presents. Yeah, I give out presents. I'm gonna hook you to next. every person. I'll give my present. I'll there you go. Shamsi you what? I'll leave it to Shamsi now. Shamsi runs away. Oh, no, I, I tried see. to debate him today. He walked Did off. You? Didn't you see it? Oh. Oh, no, I didn't see. It. I was about to say, come here, man. I yeah, yeah. present money. Ahmed, come and come and talk to us again, oh, man. if you want Something. to. Oh, man. But yeah, whenever I, I challenge Shamsi, he always like. runs. Always yeah. runs. What about I used to watch his videos quite a few. Quite, quite a if if Mohammed Ijab wants to talk to me, he can always come and talk Where to me. Well, I haven't seen him in a while. I know. I I haven't seen Ali Dawar either because he a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and I think he's either got busted or he's. Oh, he got nicked. I don't know. Oh, no way. Deserves it. Poor guy. You know? Poor guy. Oh, mate. You know it's a poor guy to someone who punches. Anyway, Ahmed, have a read of that. I will do. I will do. Write down your questions. Yeah. Come and grab Today's us again. Bump, bump. We're going to break your heart. Go, go, I'm going to break your heart. Go for it. I'm going to break your heart. Because it. just two weeks ago, yeah. no, actually today, yeah. today, in my church, yeah. there's a woman who's come from Saudi Arabia. No way. And she's come to my church yeah. to learn about the Christian faith. She wants oh. to become a Christian. Oh, all the best. Yeah, God bless. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, Ahmed is a really lovely guy. Do you keep him in your prayers? Yes. He's one of these sincere people that we know exist. A sincere Muslim. But what we saw, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. is that the Quran has no accurate description yeah. of the Trinity. And today is Trinity Sunday, which is why I wanted to debate the Trinity. And if the Quran has no accurate description of the Trinity, it means that the Quran is in error and Muslims have a good reason for rejecting the Quran. And furthermore, we see, we see that Muslims have no objection to the Christian faith that can stand up to scrutiny. All of their arguments are based on and not only a lack of understanding of our religion, but also a lack of understanding of their religious texts. They condemn us for saying that Jesus took the sins of the world, and yet the hadiths have the same concept.